Specialization is when a country, firm or worker focuses on the production of one good or a certain group of goods. Advantages of specialization for the worker and individual. 1. Allows individuals to make the best use of their skills and abilities. 2. Skills continually improve through the repeated practice of them. 3. Skilled employees generally earn more than unskilled employees as they are likely to be more productive. Disadvantages of specialization for the worker, individual. 1. Individuals must rely on others to produce the goods and services they want but can't produce themselves. 2. Doing the same job for many years can become boring and decrease job satisfaction. 3. Skills and jobs can become outdated and unwanted. These people will lose their jobs and will have to retrain to gain new skills. 4. If demand for the good they specialize in decreases, they will have difficulties finding jobs. Advantages of specialization for the country. Countries produce the good they are most skilled at. They can benefit from economies of scale and receive higher profit margins on the exports they sell. Countries develop a reputation. When countries become skilled at their specialized good they become known for it and establish loyalty. Disadvantages of specialization for the country. It can lead to over-dependence. If countries only produce a small amount of goods they are dependent on other countries to meet the rest of their needs. If another country fails to produce these goods there will be shortages of goods in the country. Specialization for the consumers. Advantages. Higher quality goods at lower prices. Disadvantages. Less variety of goods in the market. Specialization for the firms. Advantage firms develop a reputation. When countries become skilled at their specialized good they become known for it and establish loyalty. Disadvantages. Resources needed to produce so good may be scarce. Risk cannot be spread over multiple goods. Absolute advantage. A country has an absolute advantage over another in producing a good, if it can produce that good using fewer resources than another country. For example if one unit of labor in Australia can produce 80 units of wool or 20 units of wine, while in France one unit of labor makes 50 units of wool or 75 units of wine then Australia has an absolute advantage in producing wool and France has an absolute advantage in producing wine. Australia can get more wine with its labor by specializing in wool and trading the wool for French wine, while France can benefit by trading wine for wool. The theory of comparative advantage states that a country should specialize in the production of good or service in which it has lower opportunity cost and it should import commodities which have a higher opportunity cost of production. Example of comparative advantage 1. Suppose for example we have two countries of equal size, Northland and Southland. Both produce and consume two goods, food and clothes. The productive capacities and efficiencies of the countries are such that if both countries devoted all their resources to food production, output would be as follows. Northland, 100 tons of food. Southland, 200 tons of food. 2. If all the resources of the countries were allocated to the production of clothes, output would be Northland, 300 tons, of clothes, Southland, 
100 tons of clothes. The above shows that Northland has comparative advantage in producing clothes. Comparative advantage in producing a good is based on the following condition. 1. Assuming each has constant opportunity costs of production between the two products and both economies of full employment at all times. 2. All factors of production are mobile within the countries between clothing and food industries but are immobile between the countries. 3. The price mechanism must be working to provide perfect competition.